Most people, when they think of bees, think of these, the introduced European honeybee. They are very common and towards the end of spring, swarms of them can be seen as a colony searching for a new home. This can be a crack in a tree, but more often a tree hollow of some sort. Of course, honey bees using these hollows means the local wildlife can't use them. Honey bees will even on occasion take over nesting boxes that were also intended to help local wildlife. There are a number of other introduced bees in Australia, mostly in the north of the country, and there is also the European bumblebee that so far is still confined to Tasmania. Many other insects can be mistaken for bees. Some, like these wasps and sawflies, use similar markings to warn potential predators that they, like bees, have a sting. Others, like these various flies, try to look like bees to discourage would-be predators, even though they themselves are actually harmless. However, Australia does have its own native bees. In fact, there are nearly 1,700 known species of bee in Australia. Some bees from the north of Australia live in colonies and even produce small amounts of honey. But the great majority of Australian bees, including all of our local bees, such as those shown here, are solitary. One local bee that many people are familiar with is the blue-banded bee. They appear to be particularly fond of salvia flowers. Another local bee that preys on the blue banded bee is the blue spotted cuckoo bee. As our local native bees are mainly quite small and solitary, most people are not aware that they are about, but a bit of looking reveals quite a few different species. They tend to have solid tradesperson style common names like carpenter bee, plasterer bee, leaf cutter bee, as well as reed bee and resin bee. Male sweat bees can often be found clumped together for warmth on cool mornings. Generally, they clump together in a calm fashion but it only takes one or two restless individuals to stir up the bunch. While most of our local bees are too small to hurt anyone, contrary to popular belief, they do have a sting and are capable of multiple stings. It's just that our skin is usually too thick for them to penetrate. This is another instance where it doesn't pay to be too thin-skinned. 